Today, the Dodgers starting lineup would for the first time feature Steve Garvey at first base, Davey Lopes at second, Bill Russell at shortstop, and Ron Say at third base. The next eight and a half years, it would become a staple of the Dodgers lineup card. Fans, at this time, would you please direct your attention to Dodger vision for an ode to the infield. Russell, Say, Lopes, and Garvey. Each distinct personalities and players bound together by history for their improbable run. Known forever by Dodger fans as the infield. They had their own unique paths to the majors. Two of them were drafted as outfielders. One of them was a bench player. But after a few position changes at the instruction of infield coach Monty Baskell, each member of the infield was poised to be in the right place at the right time in the summer of 73. Yet despite all being drafted by the Dodgers, the venerable infield had previously never played together. Not until June 13, 1973, in the bottom of the fourth inning in a game against the Philadelphia Phillies, when Steve Garvey replaced Willie Davis at first base, and the infield was born. They appeared in the starting lineup together for the first time ten days later and would anchor the Dodgers' success over the next eight and a half years. Playing shortstop, number 18, that the shortstop of the longest running infield in Major League history also played in more Dodger games than any other player not named Zach Wheat. Drafted in the ninth round in the 1966 Major League Baseball draft as an outfielder, Bill Russell made his Major League debut on April 7, 1969 and would eventually move from the outfield to shortstop in early 1972 and stayed there for the next 11 years. Born in Pittsburgh, Kansas, Russell was a quiet man who let his play on the field do all the talk, with his rock-solid defense cementing him as one of the most sure-handed shortstops in the league. And he had some clutch hits, too. unmistakable game, Say was the only member of the infield who broke into the majors and stayed at his position. Say, whose tough personality was only outdone by his toughness as a competitor, supplied the slug, hitting over 20 home runs in each full season from 1975 to 1982. Good for fifth all-time on the Dodgers' home run leaderboard. With his smooth defense and power stroke, Say is rated by advanced veterans as the most valuable infielder in Los Angeles Dodger history. provided a dynamic leadoff bat with elite speed, stealing 418 bases in his career with the Dodgers, second all-time behind only Maury Wood. Bolstered by his play on the field, Lopes grew to become a respected clubhouse leader. He also had, arguably, the best mustache on the team. When Davey wasn't turning double plays with Bill Russell, he was stealing bases and igniting the Dodger lineup, setting the table for Say and Garden. Playing first base, number six, Steve Garvey. The Garvey. If you were 10 years old in 1978, he was likely your favorite player. And your bombs, too. Steve Garvey, the Iron Man. 1,207 consecutive games played. The 1974 National League MVP. 
part of a 30 home run club in 77 with Ron Say, Reggie Smith, and Dusty Baker. Before his success, Garvey struggled to find a defensive position at the big league level. A partial shoulder separation from playing college football at Michigan State hampered his throwing arm. After some time at third, second, and in the outfield, Garvey eventually landed at first base, where he would win four gold gloves. Media darling and hitting machine, the guard rounded out the infield with his reliable glove and his unwavering commitment to being one of the best contact hitters in the game. Garvey's consistency, offensively and defensively, was the final piece this infield puzzle needed. time together, Russell, Say, Lopes, and Garvey combined for 21 All-Star appearances. They won four pennants and finally achieved World Series success against the Yankees in 1981 in their last year together. The run of the infield, marked by sustained success and excellence, will be forever remembered as the Dodgers' greatest hit. We'd like to introduce some very special guests. Joining us for the 50th anniversary salute to the legendary infield. Please welcome the gentleman who was the president of the Los Angeles Dodgers 50 years ago. During his tenure, the club would appear in five World Series, winning titles in 1981 and 1988. Mr. Peter O'Malley. The catcher was behind the plate for the first game of the doubleheader on June 23rd, 1973. Co-MVP of the 1981 World Series, Steve Yeager. On this date 50 years ago, this player was batting leadoff for the Chicago Cubs. He could join the Dodgers in 1977 was a member of the 1981 World Series Champions, Dodger broadcaster, Rick Monday. Fifty years ago today, he was playing center field, batting behind Hank Aaron for the Atlanta Braves. He joined L.A. in 1976, and was the fourth member of the Dodgers' 30 home run quartet. Let's welcome member of the 1981 World Series Champions, Dusty Baker. Well, this pitcher made his memorable opening day start as a rookie in 1981. It was the infield of Garvey, Lopes, Russell, and Say that would help him secure his complete game shutout victory. He is a legend of Dodger baseball, Fernando Valenzuela. It's time to introduce the members of the infield. At shortstop, number 18, Bill Russell. At third base, number 10, Ron Say. At first base, number six, Steve Garvey. Now, he might not have been able to join us this evening, but we thank him for his many years of contributions as both a player and a coach for this organization. Number 15, second baseman, Davey Lopes. Now 
gentlemen, the mound is yours. Pitching for Ron Sag tonight will be his grandson, Julian. And throwing for Steve Garvey will be his grandson, Jacob. And catching for the infield. The Dodgers first baseman, Freddie Freeman. Shortstop, Miguel Rojas. And third baseman, Max Muncy. for the legendary infield. Thank you and all of our special guests for joining us on this special day in Dodgers history.